Hello everyone, my name's Gothic Lord UK and welcome to Salasta Crown of the Magister Palace of Ice, the 12th to 16 high level campaign leading directly on from the events of the main Crown of the Magister campaign. Here I have my four party, Bella, Evelyn, Orkscar and Maestro. On from when they closed the gate with the Magister and their crown, we are now going to jump into the new campaign. I'm going to start on authentic mode with Iron Man off. And then if it gets too easy, maybe we'll crank the difficulty up. Or if we get through things too quickly, we'll probably do it again with an Iron Man party on a higher difficulty or something similar. But for now, let's start the game, see what we learn. Uh, this will be fine. Thank you. Previously in Crown of the Magister. Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the council wherever you go. I swear. I swear. I swear. Her Royal Highness has a busy schedule. They were Sorax, our attackers. Not scavengers, not bandits. Sorax. Bring us the head of a Sorak for the whole council to see. They didn't die easily. Thankfully, we prevailed. There's something else. A crown? This is indeed the crown of the Magister. Belonging to Kaysenax, eternal soul of the Eight Traditions. Adrastea, the prudent shield, master of abjuration. In your debt and at your service. I feel your spirit in the crown, Kaysenax. The Magister is still in the Crown? We're not at war yet. But Galivan's massing troops at the border. Bad news really does travel fast. The city's Imperial Gate! They're here! They're trying to get away with the Crown! Look! The Princess? The crown needs you. I felt it from the beginning. Kaysenax's spirit calls for you to save him from the darkness. When you are ready, step onto the gate and fulfill your destiny. I was right about you. I must go now. Take care of Zolasta. Take care of your world. The rift closed, saw Tar, the Sorak god, still on Tiamar, and his hordes of minions were no longer a threat. The heroes were celebrated throughout the Principality of Mazgarth and beyond. The Council of Ker Keflin named them Heroes of Salasta. The heroes of the rift are on their way to the Aeonarium. They have been invited by Marshal Sunblaze, who seemed particularly worried in the letter he sent them. After one last night on the road, they wake up less than a day's walk from their destination. Morning, everyone. So, here we are. Just a few more hours and we'll be able to sleep in a bed. Well, the Inarium is basically a church, not a hostel. I don't think Beric Sunblaze and his paladins sleep on the ground, though. Come on, pack your stuff. Let's not linger. I still don't understand why we're not in Galivan looking for what's left of the Sorax. Marshal Sunblaze is obsessed with them. I'm pretty sure he wants to tell us about them. We'll know what he wants soon enough. All right, gather your stuff. Not sure which one is mine. I'll pick one at random. Hey, hey, nobody touches my underwear. No chance of that. Okay. We still have our gear, it seems. A couple of chests here. Let's just get the lay of the land. God, we've got all of our gear. No expense spared. Obviously, we don't have the crown. Although, we have now lost the attunement limitation of the crown that we had previously that stopped us wearing other things on our heads. 
We also have nearly enough XP to crest over to level 13 nearly immediately, which is interesting. So if you don't know, we have Bella Bluebell, the half-elf bard of the College of Law. 22 charisma, 16 dex, 16 con, dumping everything else. We have Evelyn, the ancestry of Hildwarf, class cleric of battle. Strength 21, thanks to this belt of giant hill strength. Wisdom 22, con 16. We have Orc Scar, the half orc paladin, oath of devotion, with this belt of giant strength for strength of 25, charisma 20, con 19. And we have Maestro, the high elf court mage, intelligence 22, con 19, dex 16, thanks to the amulet of health here. Otherwise, they've got various other bits of gear that we've gained across our adventures. Now, is there anything for us in these? Or is this just our previous... Oh, wow. <laughs> I suppose this is in case you start with a brand new party. So this would be everything you could possibly need for a bard. That looks like everything you'd possibly need for a wizard. That looked like a lot of stuff for a paladin. And then is this going to be the stuff for a cleric? Well, that is a lot of good looking stuff, isn't it? Staff of healing. All right, you can loot all of that. You can loot all of that. Bard can loot all of that. Some items do not fit in our inventory. Uh, this is a handy haversack. Do we have a... We already have a handy haversack equipped. So, tell you what. Paladin, with your 25 strength, you can most certainly gather all of that stuff, as well as all of this stuff. Now, it looks like none of this stuff is unknown to us. Lightbringer Greatsword is very fancy. Warden Blade. Plus one to armor class cast Spirit Guardians once per dawn. That sounds incredible. What are we equipping currently? Uh, a plus two Warhammer. Then, in that case, give me the Warden Blade. So our AC goes up to 23. This seems worse than our current one, although it does let us cast Daylight and Light. We already have Plate Armor plus one. A plus one Heavy Crossbow. And like, all kinds of other stuff. But, let's just check we did get everything here. Yes, good. Did you get yours? You did, and you got yours. All right, let's get on the road then. Where are we? Well, somewhere out here, there will be a mysterious blue rectangle that will allow us to carry on our way, I expect. Not sure why I've got a glowing over my head. Oh, hello. Wow, those bandits have some HP. Induce disadvantage with our shield because we're stood next to an ally. Hold firm. You endured worse. Got a bunch of archers here. Got to remember we're starting on high level spells, so high level stuff's going to be needed what current effects do we have blessed by the herald of battle or of protection or of devotion or of courage all right not sure why we have the glow over our head if that persists for the whole campaign that will be interesting to say the least let's see what spells do we fancy right now It's 
great question. Let's move to here and see if I can catch both of these guys in a cone of cold. Arcana, Evo, All right, that's 53 damage. It's pretty good going. Let's tuck in with the rest of our party there. This guy's going for high ground. They got nothing on our armor class. There's another one. Uh, yeah, we'll take a shield. Even then, 26 will get us. Uh, Galavan Smasher here. Armor class 18. Well, I think we can probably hurt them quite badly. Why do I have these spells and not the spells I normally want? I think they've been changed for me. Oh no, this is the bard, not the cleric. Excuse me, that's me being dumb. Alright, let's throw out a moonbeam up here. And just get that ticking over nicely, especially at the top of that ladder. And Bardic Inspiration for Evelyn. They get an extra D10 on a check that they miss. And then what I was going to do... Is waltz over here and... Let's just stick in like a third level Inflict Wounds here. And we'll strike them down. <laughs> Must have hurt. They are now stunned. You'll love to see it. And because they're stunned, we're going to have advantage on our attacks against them. <laughs> Little baby smite there, plus our improved smite. <laughs> right. They are surely going to die imminently. Then we just got to race off after all of these arches. Right, this guy has 6 HP. You know what we do when an enemy has 6 HP? That's right. We cast magic missiles to guarantee the kill. Stick one in there as well. That way you can't miss. They're taking radiant damage from the moonbeam. And I wager they probably won't try and move out of it. Oh no, they're going to jump ship. Fair enough. Right, let's put that moonbeam on top of these two for next turn. And bardic inspiration for Orkska. Now, we've got two over here and a single one over there. So, we'll send Orc Scar over to deal with the single candidate. And then the spellcasting gang can deal with these guys over here. What else do we fancy? Uh, just a, a little tiny fireball. Might go over well. Yeah, not that much damage, unfortunately. Right, we are going to be able to close this gap. Attack twice. You cannot defeat me. Plus twelve on our attacks is just so good. Uh, I don't think we need a branding smite or a shield of faith. Back to the top. They are healing wording themselves. Oh no, second winding. We will take our attack of opportunity. Uh, it's not a crit. I'll pass on that because we'll probably kill them in our next two attacks. They're just trying to flee away a bit. Over here, these two have quite a lot of health. What options do we have for dealing with that? Another fireball. 
Let's stick in a shatter for the two of them. Six whole damage. Great work. What I don't want to do is use all of my really big stuff right off the get-go and then get screwed over when we get out onto the road or something. Right now, it's just a bit of a mystery. Uh, yeah, more shield for you. I'll be fine. And it's not going to help on the second one, as is apparently becoming a tradition. Right. Stick that moonbeam back up here. Bardic inspiration for Maestro. Now, everyone has inspiration that might ever need it. What do we fancy? Let's stick in a second level guiding bolt down here. Strike them for the extra damage. And they are now stunned. You'll love to see it. Orkscar quite easily able to chase down this bandit. Spend our Bardic Inspiration. And then I don't think we'll need another Smite here. That's them dealt with. Any movement speed, we can start running over to the rest of the party. But we've actually lost quite a lot of health already. Which is not ideal, but you know. Uh, is this a spell attack roll? No, it's a con save. Yeah, we'll go with that anyway. Target is out of range. Apparently, Blight needs us to be quite cozy. Arcana, Necro, 35 damage, not too bad. Moonbeam continues to just chip away. God, I need to cast shield on myself, man. Or mage armor, rather. Not shield. Of course, I forgot to do it as we got off on the road. Right. I can hang out there. You can have... Ah, fine. These two, these two... All right. Only because I'm getting impatient. And it's not that much damage when they make the save, is it? Right, we're going to be dashing up here. Right, these two left. Advantage attacking here. So let's just go with a, a firebolt, see what we get. Yeah, that's more than Shatter did, isn't it? You're stunned. You're getting damaged by Moonbeam. Lovely little nat one there. Right, let's keep Moonbeam moving for the healthier one. And we can try and deal with the weaker. Well, that's no fun. Fortunately, I don't think they're going to get past Orkscar. Run while you can. Yeah. Right, we don't want to move into the Moonbeam ourselves, particularly. A firebolt doing work. Maestro's going to need some health. Now, I'd say they were actually less safe being outside of that beam because now Orkscar can just rush in. Do we even have range to attack them over there? Yeah, we do. You like it? Good work. Uh. 
Why would you do that? Why would you walk that route through that location? One last hit, and all will be resolved. Bend the knee or perish. Good stuff. 700 XP? I didn't expect an attack so close to the Anarium. They're in uniform. They're not bandits. Mercenaries from Galivan. So deep into the Principality's territory? Don't be fooled. They didn't come to invade. They came for us. Let's move. We need to speak to Marshal Sunblaze. That's an interesting new way of showing off semi-cutscene discussions. Right. Is there any... What is this? I'm so used to pressing tab for interesting stuff rather than alt. Inscription on this long-forgotten statue is eroded by time and overgrown with moss. It looks like the Vestal of Einar erected to proclaim that the land was under the protection of the Anarium. Right. Any worthwhile bits and pieces around here? Cash? Studded armor? Arrows? No, I don't need any of this. And what about this flag? Banner? A fallen ancient Malacan and ruin redolent of the ghosts of the empire and border conflict imperial banners from the antiquity somehow still remain torn in slave revolts during the war of sorrow take all the cash obviously man our bard is carrying way too much heavy stuff right now what is this just a regular breastplate don't need it All right, before we go, I would love, please, mage armor here. Our armor class goes up from 19 to 22. And then, if we could please use a power of spell shielding. This will give us 5 HP per character level. So we get 60 temporary HP for the two of them because they are most injured after that fight. But then we can get out on the road. Now, what world map are we going to get? Are we going to get one at all? I don't know. Or are we just getting directly to our destination? Unfinished business. New quest started. Meet with Beric Sunblaze. Sacks and barrels. I don't think we have any reason to be fearful in this location. I'll take magnesium though. Who knows what new craftables we might find down the line. Right, there's some people here camping. Let's head on inside. Just before we do that, I'm just going to take some of the heavy stuff that we must be carting around. I should probably check this isn't better. Studded leather armor. Bella is not proficient with this. Studded armor of leadership. Plus one AC, plus one charisma, maximum to 20. That doesn't help us. Chainmail. This chainmail is probably bogging down our weight quite a lot. That's much better. Now if we get like handed something in a cutscene, I don't have to worry about any funny business. Plants around the garden. Also welcome if we want to get ourselves crafting healing potions and the like. Another great big statue. This imposing and majestic statue of the Divine Warrior stands tall and proud in full plate armor holding a shield emblazoned with a fiery cross. A feeling of surety emanates from its presence. And one last bush over here. Some Malakan and Orchids and presumably just keep moving through. There he is. Hey, Marshall. 
My friends, it is so good to see you again. Likewise, Marshal. We came as fast as we could. Great, thanks. You must have many questions. But something came up that I have to take care of, right away. You've been traveling all day. You should take a rest. We'll talk tomorrow morning. Fine. Where can we set up camp? Ah, you're pulling my leg, aren't you? We have a room set aside for you. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Thank you, Marshal. Do you love a good long rest? Rest overnight. That's locked. We're going this way according to the compass. The Snow Alliance and the Crown of the Magister. New crafting options. Did they come from these books? Right, a bunch of stuff in there. A bunch of stuff in there. Not sure why we got those new recipes, but no complaints. More bookcases. Oh, we've rested. Damn, I was going to read. Right, is there anything we actually want to attune to? Flute of Respite, Flute of Respite, Blasting, Sigil of Abjuration, Gauntlets of Ogre Power. Interesting. They now show you what you are capable of attuning to or what's in your inventory, one of the two, rather than just everything. Wand of the War Mage, plus one focus. Staff of Metis grants plus two to intelligence up to maximum of 20. I don't know if that's better than what we currently have, but we can check that when we do a short rest, we can change anything that we fancy. As for spells, I think I'm happy. We can indeed get out these bookcases. Apparently the bookcases just have the recipes for us, which... I'm not against. Let me just see here. Our intelligence is 22. This gives us plus two intelligence up to a maximum of 20. And we're not equipping this right now. So it's not actually contributing to our intelligence stat. So we should take a short rest. We rest for one hour. And then having done so, we can attune here. Remove attunement to the staff of Metis. And add instead attunement to either the staff of fire. 10 charges, 1d6 charges at dawn. Cast burning hands, fireball and wall of fire. Or, War of the War Wand of the War Mage for plus one to our spell attacks. Ignore half cover when making a spell attack. Um, we don't actually make that many spell attacks. Most of our stuff is AoE and the like. So, I'll take the Staff of Fire for now. But good to know that we can have, rather than plus one to our spell casting modifier, plus one to our attack rolls. So we have that now, and if we close here, if we make sure we are wielding that, then we get use items, burning hands, fireball, wall of fire, at the cost of charges. Cool. And, of course, our spell, mage armor for ourselves. At the start of a new day. Alright, let's go see Barrack. Where are you, dude? Oh, okay. That'll do. Here you are. Marshal, it's a pleasure to see you again. Same wise, my friends. I called upon you not as a member of the Legacy Council, but as a keeper of the light in front of darkness. Is the crown remaining here? You'll keep the crown of the Magister in display here. Exactly. Even if it's just an old relic now. It serves our task 
as guardians of the memory of Celasta. So what's going on? How are things going with the kingdom of Galivan? It is not an all-out war yet, just skirmishes on the border. I hear they are also attacking the lands of the Snow Alliance. Actually, some of their mercenaries attacked us on our way here. Really? That's another sign of their ties to the Sorax. Your targets now. Don't worry about us. And Sorax have triggered this war? Is it confirmed that Sorax control the Kingdom of Galavan? There is not much space for doubt anymore. Though we do not know how they do it exactly. Corruption, coercion, or plain replacement. After all we did to close the rift, to think they're still around, that's really depressing. You did prevent a massive invasion. Without you, we wouldn't be here anymore. Which is why I asked for your help. You must remember when the Antiquarians left the Legacy Council as the war started. Yet the Church of Anar has ties with the Snow Alliance. One of our renowned clerics, Vigdis Kaikonen, belongs to one of their oldest clans. While she was here in the Anarium, her father was found dead. Who is she exactly? What can you tell us about Vigdis? Well, she is an experienced battle cleric from the Order of the Shield. She took part in multiple expeditions to the Badlands. She is wise, strong, a paragon of our creed. And you think it was Sorax? How do you tie this death to the Sorax? Lord Kaikonen was kidnapped, kept in a hidden house, and notes had been taken on his behavior, his way of speaking, his taste in food. So they could learn to mimic him. It looks like it. One of his captains found him. He killed a couple of Sorax, but sadly, the Lord could not be resurrected. And what's with the Alliance? Do you think the Sorax aim to take over the Snow Alliance like they did Galavan? It is their way. Therefore, yes, I am afraid so. The difference is that now we know they are here and how they operate. We have to go and investigate. We can't have the Principality surrounded by Sorak puppets. Lady Vigdis and her escort leave for home tonight. I would feel more comfortable if you could be with her. They could be after her, too. And possibly the other clan chiefs. The politics of the Snow Alliance are complicated. You will have to swim with sharks. I think we can deal with that. We survived the Legacy Council, after all. I am sure of that. You are heroes of Masgarth. Your reputation precedes you, and your mission is sacred. Let no one keep you from your duty. You can count on us, Marshal. I shall keep you informed of the political situation. Letters from the Inarium always find their destination. I would ask you to keep me updated of your progress in return, if you please. Of course. Naturally. Thank you. Stay in the light. All right, do we have a caravan to meet? In that case. Where are we headed? Read those. Oh, those are... Meeting in the courtyard. Hello there. Clear skies, heroes of the Rift. Lady Vigdis, our condolences for your father. Thank you. I appreciate it. Also, Marshal Sunblaze insisted that I wait for you to return home. I hope it's not too much bother. We're off to Sorax. And if they're scheming in the snow lines, then that's where we're headed. Of course. We need all the help we can get. We don't know much about your country. What can you tell us? Well, it's cold. Ha! Huh. I hope you brought some warm clothes. What's the, the geopolitics where we're going? I seem to remember that the Antiquarians are from the Snow Alliance. But what's the political stance of the country? The Alliance is one of the three nations surrounding the Principality of Mascarth. We feared the new empire might attack to take the Copperhead Road, but instead it was Galavan. We owe that to the Sorax, I suppose. We would have supported you against the new empire, but Galavan... This war divided us. We were not ready for a threat on the Eastern Front. And yet, many of us still want to be friends with the Principality. The history? 
How was the Snow Alliance founded? After humans arrived here, from the Rift, the Snow Dwarves were already providing shelter for the Sylvan Elves. So it was decided to officialize an alliance against the Manakalan Empire. So it's not just a nation of dwarves? We are the most numerous, but no. There are human clans and elven clans. And the leaders? Who's the leading figure in the alliance? Power is divided between the clans, and decisions are made in our parliament. There are a handful of great houses, families, who generally lead the clans. My house, Kaikonen, runs one of the five major clans, the Guardians of the South. Etelen Vardmekind, in Dwarfish. Please don't ask me to repeat that. <laughs> it gets worse. Our capital city is Varkarokapun, which means White Rock City. Uh, I think we'll stick to White City. <laughs> That'll do. Well, thank you for enlightening us, Lady Vigdis. You know, you don't have to call me Lady. You're heroes. I'm just a young cleric. Some of us believe in the idea of nobility, my lady. But we can make an effort for you, Vigdis. I see. Don't let me disturb your group's harmony. I'll wait for you outside. Just tell me when you're ready to go. I can't imagine there's a great deal more for us to do. Visit the merchants. Optional. There's merchants here? Where are these merchants? Priest. Ah, okay. I'll hop in over to the... Uh, there's a general store, and that's her. Weapon store, ingredients store, general store. Okay. All kinds of stuff here. What are we getting rid of? Is a great question. Plus two dagger can go. We don't need two flutes of respite. Do I want a plus one rapier over my elven thin blade? No. God, we got so much stuff. Get rid of these books. We still have the sigil rings and stuff from our original trip. Uh, I don't need gauntlets of ogre power anymore either. Up here. Staff of healing might be actually beneficial. Care wounds, lesser restoration, mass care wounds. Would be an interesting one. Plus one mace. We currently have a plus one warhammer, so the plus one mace can go. Plus one crossbow. It might be better than that if we're able to equip it. A plus one shield. We currently have a plus one bright wall. You have a plus one cog. You have a plus one plus two. And you don't use a shield. So I don't think we're in great need of this generic shield. Magnificent chainmail. I really need to check who's equipped with what, really. Handy haversack. We don't need an additional handy haversack. Up here, I'll keep the plus two warhammer. Dagger can go. A bunch of this weaponry that we got off the battlefield can go. Lightbringer greatsword. I'm not going to be using a greatsword if we're equipping a shield. Standard plus one longsword can go. Keep the warhammer, javelins, primed stuff, magnificent spear, heavy crossbow, woven war drums would be for our bard. Chainmail can go. Another bright wall. Plus one to AC, plus two to AC. Plus one plate armor is what we're currently wearing, so we can sell that. Handy have a sack, handy have a sack. We have a bag of holding, which is better than that, so that can all go. And we're already incredibly rich. Plus one crossbow, wand of magic missile, wand of the war mage, keep that. 
Ring of all words may well come in useful down the line. Ring of poison resistance will keep cool. And you don't have anything super necessary for us, do you? Holy symbols, couple of potions, couple of diamonds, but nothing major. Weapon store. I'm imagining we are well enough equipped with what we have. Plus one shields, plus one battle axes. Regular armor, wonder the war mage. Yeah, nothing super interesting here. As for the ingredients merchant, I'm not even sure what we'd really be after for ingredients. I don't know what I'm particularly looking to craft, although I know a troll heart is needed for uh, something, like a belt of regeneration or something. Got a lot of interesting stuff. I'm hoping we can probably come back here and pick up some of this stuff down the line if we need it, because... I can't think of anything that I'm going to craft right now. Speaking of right now, though, I think that is where our first opening episode will end. Join me next time. We will speak to Vigdis and get back on the road, see what things are like going north. Although, I may do some more shopping here for stuff, given that if we get north, we might be staying there for a long time, given the nature of the campaign. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, you can put those down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.